Ladies and gentlemen, you are about to listen to the incomparable Win Twice Wrestling Podcast with your hosts, Scott and Holly. So sit back, relax, and prepare to be entertained. Hello everyone and welcome to the first ever episode of the Win Twice Wrestling Podcast. Uh, I'm your host Scott alongside Holly. Hello. And uh, yeah, so basically just to start off, we're going to go over a, a kind of idea of what exactly we're going to cover in the shows going forward. We'll do a little bit of an introduction to begin with so you get to know who we are. Fair warning, there will be lots of jokes, so hopefully nobody is easily offended because there'll probably be plenty of opportunities to find offence here, but that won't be intended on our part. So I guess we should start off really and do kind of like how we know each other, I guess. I, yeah. I've, I've done a lot of talking already, so I'll let you oh, good. cover <laughs> cover that part off, if you'd be so kind, Holly. Um, oh my God, I don't even know how old we were when we first met. You Think, were a wee, a a wee, wee lad, child. A wee lad with no facial hair, still yeah. milk on my upper lip. Uh, I think I was about 16, from that recollection. Would, that would put me a little bit older. A little bit older, you don't want to be too specific. <laughs> no, no. No. Not a lot of it, just she a little would have been bit. 18, just for anyone that was wondering. <laughs> but yeah, at work, effectively. Yeah. 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 Worked in the same department. Yeah. Very boring office based job um, at the time. Still and, is. Well, yeah, still is, but we don't need to go into the details of that now. No <laughs> naming and shaming needs to take place. Um, but yeah, and then to be fair, we didn't kind of really talk for a long time. I think we were Facebook friends, so that's yeah. basically like best buddies at that point. Oh, yeah. Um, and then we ended up many years down the line working together again. And yeah. I think because at the time I didn't know you're a wrestling fan. No, I don't think back then no. I didn't really tell people because, you know. But were you into wrestling then, like when you were 18? Uh, yeah, so I had been and then I kind of weaned off it slightly. Weaned off it? Yeah, that's okay. the terminology I will use. Yeah, that's good. Um, I suppose through my years of going out, drinking and... That's not what you referred to it last <laughs> oh, time. Okay, my slut era there you go. is what I referred yeah, to yeah. it as. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> great, thanks. That's uh, but that era yeah. kind of took over rather than watching wrestling and then just got back into it. So there's a lot of stuff out there that I haven't seen. Yeah. So it will be good to be able to yeah i mean that. and that's the idea of this to be fair like obviously we'll be doing this mainly for our own entertainment but hopefully people will get on board with it and the back and forth will work quite well and at least be entertaining for people to listen to but my background with wrestling is a little bit different or a little bit longer i should say than holly so i don't have recollection exactly of obviously the first instance i watched it because i was so young but effectively when i was living in uh, a, a different part of surrey shall we say <laughs> Um, I was obviously quite an annoying baby as I am an annoying adult and my mum to get me to stop creating a fuss at the age of 18 months of age was flicking through the TV landed on wrestling and I went dead quiet because oh, okay. I was transfixed with like the loud colours the... yeah. it just it was just exciting even for an 18 month old and it just kept me quiet so that seemed to be the routine that one, my mum would go for and it stuck and it stuck ever since all these so, years later because no one in my family as okay. a wrestling fan not single person i mean my i think my grandpa back in oh god like the 40s used to go and watch what the equivalent would have been back then in the uk scene so i'm sure he had a was it farmer's lad or something there's a old oh. picture of him with an autograph on that my grandpa had back in the day but other than that yeah it's just it's just been me and it's it's one of those things where because i was an only child as well i feel like it was a world in which i could kind of escape and use a bit of creative imagination and go from there like everything i did around a certain age that involved creative output was based on wrestling so i would get to the point and this is a little bit sad i don't even think you know this oh gosh. but i used to like because i had all the the action figures back in the day and yeah. I, I was surrounded by some now but these are the more recent ones yeah and i used to write down my cut like i'd book a show so because oh, i used to have the, the okay. old ring every event had a raw rumble because it was my favorite of event. course and to the point where to get like so for example if i was ever being babysat by my grandparents they mm. would uh, put me downstairs in the lounge and i'd say right grandpa i need you to count two minutes and every 
the, like with the last two uh, ten seconds, I want you to go ten, nine, oh, that's and then so sweet. when you get to the end of it, I'm gonna rustle around in the box and bring another wrestler in. Oh, it. okay. So, so like, even you didn't know who was gonna be no. the next person in the ring. Oh no, no, no! I was uh, booking on the fly. I think they call oh. it. But uh, yeah, so okay. that's a bit more of my background. I've kind of watched it in some periods more off than on. Um, like for example. I'll watch the highlights of current shows. I'll, I'll tend to still watch the big events, but mm-hmm. I won't sit there and watch a two, three hour Raw and SmackDown yeah. because there's a lot of stuff that's too tiresome. Um, I guess I'm lapsed in that respect and shout out to the Laps Fan Podcast, which is great if anyone is interested in other <laughs> wrestling podcasts. Obviously stay here, but listen to them as well because they're fantastic. Um, but yeah, it's... For me, it used to be better. I can still get moments where I enjoy things in there, but I enjoy it more for the athleticism than I do the storytelling now. Yeah. Whereas yeah, back in the day, sure. I felt like the storytelling was the key driver. Yeah. I suppose, yeah, being younger, it was like, oh my God, they're doing this. This has happened. But he's meant to be with her and also like yeah. the drama. Yeah. And now it's like, let's just not, let's just uh, have, have your match. I don't need, I don't yeah, need the, exactly, the yeah. I mean, background. Uh, as well, like, so... What we're doing for this show, and the format for this one will be slightly different to the ones we do going forward, is that we basically each picked a match that has some sort of meaning to us. So, for the most part, most of the stuff that we'll end up watching in the future will be on the WWE Network. I I mean, there will be shows that we can watch elsewhere. I've got subscriptions to other services, so that that stuff can be covered as well. But just to kind of give you a bit of a taste of what we'll be doing... Like I said, we've each picked a match that has some sort of meaning to us. We're going to kind of discuss it a little bit. So for the purpose of this show, we watched the matches. We've made some notes on it. Some are understandable. Others aren't. I'm so concerned that I'm not going to understand I think half what of should, what I've noted. What you should do, though, is read it verbatim and just see how mental oh, it actually sounds don't out Don't you loud. worry, I shall. <laughs> but speaking of um, like how things came to be, so in terms of what made us decide to start doing a podcast, I think that was... To be fair, Holly, that was your idea, wasn't it? Yeah, I'm not sure how, but I just thought... I think because we talk about it so much, yeah. I personally don't listen to oh, like many wrestling podcasts. I'll listen to the odd one that you'll say, oh, listen to this. And I listen to like I listen to wrestlers that yeah. have podcasts, yeah. but they're not about really about wrestling. Okay. Well. So like Corey Graves, his oh, one with... Oh, I wonder why. Yeah, I yeah. know, but still. Um... So, but I thought for me, the one thing that's missing from most of them is actually a female, like perspective. Yeah, okay, most of them fair. are dudes. Yeah, which is fine. Yeah, but because we talk about it so much, I was like, I'm sure there must be other girls out there that are the same as me that don't listen to them purposefully for that reason. Yeah, so I mean, I'm here for the female entertainment. Diversity is what we're going for <laughs> yeah, there. Sure. That was unintentional, but it's just funny because obviously you don't like listening to your own voice nope, so absolutely not and i guess that's what i'm bringing to the table i am the editor i think that ends up talking quite a bit but <laughs> yeah and I, I guess we should like go into a little bit of detail on how the name itself oh, came God. to be so okay I, right uh, right okay so i'll just put this out there holly's got quite a creative imagination when it comes to how things should be named <laughs> And um, the topic of uh, two out of three falls matches... It's so silly. Came up. Why is it silly, though? It's stupid. Because you're winning twice. Well, yeah. So why do... But it's still do... best two out of three. It sounds it's a bit more artistic than... Right. I said artistic, not autistic as well. But I, <laughs> I don't even know what we were watching. It was some pay-per-view and it was a two out of three. Or was I it, it uh, NXT it, yeah. or something? We were watching something. Yeah. I can't even remember how, but it, the, just the words came out of my mouth. Just call it the win twice. The win twice So, match. And I'll be honest, it, the name just kind of it's, stuck. It I'd, has stuck around since then, yeah. I'd reference it at least, oh, I don't know, once every two days, every time we'd see each other, because it was just fantastic. And the thing is, like, as much as I prefer the name two out of three falls match, she has a point. You're just winning twice. Well, you are just winning twice, but... That's all you've got to do. It's not, well, why don't they call any matter. match a win match? Well, yeah. Because you have to win any match. Yeah. But, yeah. Brilliant. I'm, I'm down for it. Oh, okay, I think we've solved the problems of wrestling there, everyone. <laughs> uh, that's great. Um, but, yeah, so what we'll be doing um, in other shows, we'll be picking a show in its its full format. We'll be going over it. We won't, like I said, go into the nuts and bolts of every move and stuff, but we'll have a kind of a little brief analysis on each match, maybe some of the build-up that went into it. If I do a little bit of background research, that'll probably be more on me. Then, uh, maybe. Then, yeah. Then. Also, if we're talking about moves, right? Yeah, right I'm okay. just putting it out there. I do not know the the names 
of 90% of the moves that people <laughs> use. So I will describe it. Yeah. And nine times out of ten, you'll sit and you'll wait for me to finish. And you'll go, oh, that's this. But I just wanted to hear you explain it. Oh, 100%. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, okay. to be fair, that is that is going to be what people want to hear. They don't want to hear technically correct analysis. They want to hear, <laughs> oh, he did the flippy flu where he landed on his neck. That was amazing. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's how this will work. So th- there'll be a, a little bit of that. But I think, I'll, I'll be honest, people will be along for the ride. So, yeah, we'll be doing that going forward. Um, but like I said, this is just a more of a sample episode to to see how how it all goes um i think from from what i've done on this very official schedule that i'd have ripped out of a notepad i I believe we're going into your match first and uh, the reasons you chose it and you know that kind of good stuff so brilliant so please if you could uh, let me refer to my really good notes really good notes um okay so i picked a match from wrestlemania 17 yeah i say that with such confidence yeah x7 uh, as the cool sure, kids yeah. 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 I, mm, that, that's <laughs> never going to be me. Um, and it is the TLC match. Okay. So I guess the first question is, and I think I know the answer, but yeah. why did you pick that match specifically? Jeff Hardy. Jeff Hardy. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. I literally have been obsessed with him for a very long time. I think he... This sounds awful because I looked at how old I was when this match came out and yeah. it was very not appropriate but I'm to have a crush on someone pretty sure he was the first guy on TV that I saw and I was like he's a bit of me he is it, right so this will probably open the window a little bit more into Holly's oh, views heck. but is it because he's a bit of a damaged damaged bird <laughs> right annoyingly I saw my friends last night and they also said that I have a complex mm. for wanting to fix yes like yeah damaged people <laughs> yeah so uh, again i think you'll see a theme of the people that uh holly likes some of them are you know very questionable some of them are, are all right i can't get on board with baron corbin like that's just that's, oh he's lovely he's not though is he, he looks like a massive sperm like, oh, sorry baron if you're listening i mean you're not <laughs> but you do look a little bit sperm like don't get me wrong the long hair wasn't oh, yeah, great i wasn't a fan of but the, it was the long hair but no i like i like the I he like looks the like he's look. going through some sort of treatment blessing Oh, but no, he sad. does a little bit. Like it's just he's just bald. It, no, he is bald, but he's so bald. Like because he's quite pasty as well. And it, I just I can just tell he's not happy. Would you rather he wore the hat? I'd rather he tango himself. <laughs> Do you know what Happy Corbin? Apart from like the lame wolf stuff, <laughs> yeah. Happy Corbin for me was his best look because okay. it it covered the, oh, the bit that yeah. upsets me. Okay. Don't get me wrong, I'm no oil painting. I get that, <laughs> but like, I look at Baron Corbin and go, no, surely not. Like, okay. there's something you, you're going to... I mean, you're entitled to your opinion, as as we all are, but... Brilliant. But I think you're wrong. wrong. That's fine. That's fine. And, that's, you know, <laughs> and I like just, how we already digressed just, from yeah. Jeff Hardy to Baron to Corbin. To Baron Corbin, who yeah. does not feature in the TLC no, match at they? WrestleMania 17. Uh, but yeah, there'll be a lot of kind of segueing, so you just kind of have to go along for the ride. But I think that's probably, to be fair, what people will be here for. Um, yeah. So, right, again, apart from Jeff Hardy, was yeah. there anything else about this match that made you go... It has to be this one for me. No, no, no I'm joking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's also one of the first ones that I remember. Okay. Like, my, so my when I was a kid, we didn't have like Sky or anything. Yeah. So my neighbour used to record the stuff for me nice. on a good old VHS. Brilliant. Hand it over the back fence. Love that. And I'd watch it the next day. Like a dodgy drug deal. Pretty much. Like he didn't want to be associated with no. recording no. WWF for you. Brilliant. Um. So I think, but I think it's just one of the matches that really sticks in my mind. Yeah, that's fair. Always has. If I'm chilling, yeah. Sometimes I'll put it on. Yeah. Yeah, it's just always stuck with me. Well, it, it, to be fair, it is like an iconic match. I mean, I've I've seen it a few times myself. Um, like you said, not it's not one that I just go to. I tend not to do that too much, to be fair. But I think we've got it's a solid match to start off with. Yeah. And we do it. What we did was look, so let you into a little bit of the creative window here is we watched the match separately. We haven't discussed it, and we've made notes. I, mine, I'd say, are fairly detailed. I haven't seen Holly's notes, but I'm not filled with confidence based on how she <laughs> said uh, the note-taking went. Well, Did, I'll be honest, this match took was hard to write notes for. Because it's so chaotic. I just, and I just got distracted. I had to Jeff watch Hardy. it three times. See, okay, Jeff Hardy. I'll give you Jeff Hardy. Very yeah. handsome man. 
I got do edge have... in there as well. Like edge when he edge was in yeah, his peak before his eyes started falling oh, out his head. Absolute peak. He looks gaunt now. He doesn't look a well boy. He's just a bit old. Yeah. Well, I mean, funny enough, the first note I put. Bearing in mind how iconic this match is, my first note was seeing Christian with long hair is unsettling. Oh yeah, he looks so much better with short hair. He looks like he'd catfish someone. Like you go, you see someone at the bar, you go up to them and go, gosh, she's got lovely hair. Oh, and like, turn around, it's a dude. Turn around, it's just yeah, a dude. Yeah. Like a Whereas, Canadian I think dude. it's because he stood next to Edge most of the time and Edge's long, luscious looks. Oh, Sexton Hardcastle. And, yeah. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll be honest, the Dudleys won't bring him much to the table in the the eye candy front. No, but, like, but. my my note, yeah. my first note says, uh, apart from Jeff Hardy, we'll skip over that bit again. It says, <laughs> in my opinion, three of the best tag teams to ever be on WWE I in that think, era. Oh, in that era, easily. Yeah. I, th- I think the argument could be made for for all time, to be honest. Yeah. They And they worked so well together. Oh, and so I think good. you saw that in this match. It was like a, you know, to use a bit of a Jim Ross adage back in the day it's like a demolition derby but they're using uh-huh. their bodies instead of cars yeah and that is very much how it came across there are a couple of things in there oh where... yeah there's so oh. right should we just kind of like go over bits and pieces because i've tried to do it i did it chronologically i did it as i was watching the match yeah so, so mine's kind in. of in order okay fine um the first thing actually i did say as well is that for me that i had the cds the right. music in this ruthless era like yeah, okay. of wrestling was brilliant and the fact that Limp Biscuit are doing the soundtrack was to it? this event WrestleMania yeah that's true brilliant. wasn't like I could be wrong and I'm gonna it's gonna sound very bad if it isn't but wasn't one of the CDs called like forcible entry oh, or know. something like that which you, I don't that's know, but I'm not, not gonna okay google it because well yeah don't be put WWE yeah. <laughs> before you do that yeah you can't just put forcible no. entry on google because but yeah I had to see there's a massive cd and like you unfolded it and there was like six yeah. different cds from that the had eras. everyone's like intros on it yeah because so it, it didn't just cover like the attitude era it had, no. like, some of the old, yeah i yeah. had that same cd i'm looking yeah. now around in the room to see if i've got it because i'm sure i had that okay well that's great yeah. that's yeah okay yeah, yeah so as it's your match i'll let you kind of lead and i'll just throw my bits in as we're going along so okay well already concerned about my notes um <laughs> one of my notes um is about the outfits that people are wearing Brilliant. so let's just get that out there now yeah the hardies in the see-through tops yeah sexy i'm yeah. here for it yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm here for it yeah. even matt hardy matt's looking looked good in in this Matt's looking like... a bit toy like a toiger i thought there oh, he yeah. was it was all right and i'll be honest jeff jeff hardy's got the prettier face but mm. his facial hair dragged him down for me oh, i'm here for it it's, it's always a, a bit yeah. interesting i'm here for it yeah okay and then when it's always when they take the top off as well in the match and remember, i specifically remember matt taking his off yeah you hear all the women in the crowd just like a <laughs> noise and it's you only get that when a good looking boy takes yeah. his top off yeah because it doesn't work the other way around like what do you mean? well let's be fair like in this era the yeah. wwf was quite fair to say misogynistic oh for sure like the amount like i thought i grew up listening to jerry the king lola talk about women puppies pu- puppies yeah like that's an acceptable thing to yeah i know it's so bad like and it's not aged well especially like don't get me wrong i'm not going to go into you know thoughts on woke culture and stuff like that but you certainly have to be more careful about the oh, stuff that sure. you say these days for sure. and espe- especially with it being him and he's got a bit of a history for sexual okay. misconduct shall we say right i don't think he's ever been convicted so i'll put in that it's alleged there. alleged very um, alleged underage uh, oh girls. interesting okay and the thing that i find really creepy about that other than the facts of what, what it is what it is yeah. is that he's a big fan of like christmas and santa and okay. nothing wrong with being a big fan of christmas or santa yeah. i love christmas you like christmas yeah but i don't go around touching kids that's like that's okay. a, that's a different thing God. okay but, how did how did we segue over here from see through tops talk, talk, to cause see through tops <laughs> that's and then to talk about jerry the king lola being an alleged uh yeah. deviant okay but yeah it's just it, it doesn't sit right with me and i think we'll see probably in some shows coming up for the things that i liked as like a 12 year old yes year old, that you rewatch now and you go, you go oh my oh, god that's not, yeah, yeah 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 it's aged poorly yeah but th- again that's what that's what we're here for it'll be interesting to see it through you know our eyes in the yeah. future as it were yeah but yeah sorry um, I, I interrupted you so yeah i was just commenting on, on their outfits really and then you see christian and edge come down yeah. and right in no way i'm I'm not an athlete, like, do you know what I mean? I'm yeah. 
look like a sausage trapped in a skin. But, she doesn't. Just um, <laughs> but when you put anyone next to Edge yeah. when he looked like that, yeah. Christian looks ridiculous. Also in a see-through top. Don't yeah. look good. Don't that look was, good. It was. It, it was the hair for me. Took it off. It was the hair because it was too. Because, right. This is going to be a general rule for me, especially in this era, and I think even so now, and they do do it now still. If you've got long hair, you can't go out with dry hair. It doesn't look. Oh uh, right. yeah, oh yeah. Like it needs to look greasy, Wet. like you've not washed for about a month. Like like Drew McIntyre's, like, like Drew, Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, dripping. all yeah. of them dripping through the comb. That's yeah. what we need. Um, yeah. So um, I mean, I've thrown myself off there with that comment, but. Yeah, so I'll be honest, I dripping, yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. I did, I'll be honest, I didn't make too many notes on the outfits because I figured, Holly, that would yeah, be your me. area. I'll probably get involved in certain matches when it comes to the outfits. But well, we talk about the women, yeah. I didn't say that, you said that. Um, um, but I, I, the first comment I put, apart from Christian's hair, I said the chaos at the start of the match was great. Like, straight, there was no, like, feeling out process. No, the stress, straight, a brawl. Yeah. Like, which is what it should be. If it's yeah. going to be like that kind of match, it needs to be controlled chaos. Yeah. And again, one of the other early comments I put here is, I love Paul Heyman on commentary. Yeah, yeah. It to works. be fair, I hadn't actually realised yeah. that it was him, and then I was listening and I was like, "Oh, I know who it's, that is." It's don't get me wrong. I'm a big Paul Heyman fan in general, but the way he can put something across as being the most important thing is second to none for me. Like, don't get me wrong. There's been some greats in the past. Like, I mean, you probably won't be as familiar with their work, but like Bobby the Brain Heenan back in the day, nope. Jim Ross, oh, no, just a knows. legend. Yeah. But Paul Heyman, in mm. his relatively short stint on commentary in WWF, I thought was brilliant. And I forgot it was even a thing, to be honest, yeah. until I rewatched this match. And it's just, yeah, it, it's really good. Um, some, oh, something else, before we even get into like the actual right, match for okay. me. Uh, yeah. um, music. Music. Okay. The, hard, oh, the Hardy's intro yeah. is just, to me, it's the, it's the best. I like, like the Dudley's. Yeah. It's yeah. just that I'm not going to try and do the... I was about to... No. because no, it just won't come across well. No. But it's brilliant. It just it's got, works. It like, works for so them as characters good. as well. Yeah. Yeah, I and mean... Even, even now, like, the Hardys music for me, like, obviously they're my favourite. But yeah. when they came back at the later WrestleMania and there was the surprise yeah. entry... To the same. As soon as you hear that music... Yeah. Great. Do you, do you get out of your chair and start doing the old the finger gun salute, whatever Jeff? That, I don't know how to call that, but I think anyone who's seen <laughs> the, Jeff Hardy will know. The finger gun, the hip thrust. The finger, yeah, I'm exactly. All about leaning it. back. Like all a, about it. It's like a slutty girl dance, I think. Like I don't know, there's something about this a little bit Christian Aguilera dirty yeah, yeah, for me. Yeah. Um, but he can pull it off, so credit he's, to him. He's got rhythm. Um, again, some of the, like, I, any line I hear in the commentary that catches my attention, I try to make a note of. And there okay. were two specifically in this match. I'll get to one of them later. But it was it was early on, and Jr. said these bodies will be so ravaged, and I put Holly sure hope so. <laughs> is uh, the comment yeah. I put next to it, especially with the a girl the, can uh, dream, a girl can dream indeed. But yeah, and there's another one which is a bit more uh, suspect later on because he definitely did it intentional. But I'll, oh, I'll wait till we okay. get there. Um, right, where are my notes? So yeah, I think another point on this one was the obviously. Now I'm older, I understand that it's not real. Yeah. Right? Wait, what? <laughs> Stop. I'm so sorry, Stop. everyone. No, but do you know what I mean? Like, it's predetermined. Oh, my God. Stop. We know they're this. They're pantomime athletes. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no. Like, the, the result is predetermined. Yeah. But this match for me also proved the fact that, okay, that might not be real. But what they're doing. It hurts. Oh, it has to. Yeah. And there were so many times in this match where. Uh, again, most likely it was always Jeff Hardy, but yeah. you like the way he lands, yeah. or misplaced um, something, and I'm like, he's just landing full on his head. Yeah. Like, I mean, he's, and I mean this with all due respect to the guy. I'm surprised he's still alive. Like, yeah, not just for his, his in ring stuff, his out of ring stuff as well. But through the mill. But you watch it and you think, well. It's no surprise that these people get addicted to painkillers because you just must be... I'm sore all the time and all I do is weights. Like, yeah. like, I don't throw myself around and jump off ladders. Well, not in that respect anyway. Uh, but... I don't do that either. But... <laughs> <laughs> not since the slut years no. or whatever you said. <laughs> but, so I, the, the worst bump for me in the match, which I just thought looked horrendous, and I, I don't know if it was fully intended because I think Matt Hardy landed it right, but Christian didn't, is when they got pushed off the ladder... 
opposite the hard camera. Hardy crotched himself on the yes. top rope, oh, but Christian went straight, straight over, over the, top the top to the floor, and yeah. he kind of came down at an angle. I thought you could blow out your ankle, oh, your knee. For sure. Fortunately, he looked to be relatively unscathed from it. But yeah. I, again, it's one of those moments in the match that I always forget happens because mm-hmm. I think about some of the other big bumps that happened later on in, in the match. But that just looked miserable. Yeah. Really miserable. I think the other comment from early on in the match that I put was uh, the Dudleys doing the what's up is the most two thousands thing <laughs> yeah. ever. It's just, and also the fact that he does that, yeah, and actually doesn't even touch him. No, like you look at the what angle you, of the camera, and I'm like, but what are you expect him to actually plow his face into no, his jump? Like, at least make it look like, yeah, well, closer yeah, okay. than it, or get the like. I think yeah. I suppose now it's better because the camera angles are so much better and yeah everything you're like oh that would be filmed from like behind them right. so you can't see the fact that yeah. there's a foot in between yeah so it was funny I mean, but to be fair if i'm devon dudley i'm probably not in a rush to bury my face in anyone's genital area like unless, said, uh, someone. well i don't know i, I don't know what devon, <laughs> devon's preference is maybe we'll ask him someday but uh yeah for me that's uh yeah not not something i'll be grateful uh to do myself uh, yeah but <laughs> another speaking of jeff um, yeah. I put one of my notes here. Jeff continually being treated like his life doesn't matter. Oh, he's just ragdolling. Yeah. Like, ragdolled around. There's one bit, and I can't remember who does it, um, but he is lifted and pl- edges on a table. I'm sure it's Edge. Yeah. And Jeff is lifted by someone. I can't remember power who it is. It. And power bombed. Bubba Ray. And he just smacks yeah. the back of his head, like neck, yeah. on edge. And you're like, Because he didn't. Jesus. So like, I'm, I've obviously never been a pro wrestler. I would assume that he was supposed to go back on yeah, front. Yeah, for sure. But Bubba sold him short and yeah. smacked him neck through. That was where I actually drove the comment uh, down. Okay. Said his life doesn't matter. Because there's a couple bits that he did. like, mm-hmm. And it would have looked really good if it, it panned out. But you know, he goes to walk across the ladders. Oh my God. I'm gutted that that, that is in my Because that would have been a moment. It was. I could see it, obviously yeah. re-watching it, but like, I was like, oh my God, oh my God. And I'm like, oh, so annoying. Yeah. So annoying, because and, that would have been epic. Yeah, but the thing, because not long after that is obviously when he's then speared off. But Which, it's probably the iconic moment of yeah, the match. For but sure. for me, it's not. No. I'll, I'll say okay. mine in a bit. It's great, don't get me wrong. Okay. And I think Bubba deserves actually quite a bit of credit for his setup for that. Don't get me wrong, Jeff had to hook his feet into the ladder, yes. but Bubba walked it away so that he so swung swing. towards yeah. Edge. And I don't know you know, how badly, I can't imagine it felt great, however no. they did it, but I, th- I think I might have heard Edge say stuff where like, that actually really did mess him up a little bit. And I'm looking at it, and again, it's not me, I'd be dead if I did oh. that. But he doesn't look like he gets too bad no. out of it, unless he actually drove his head into the mat, which I couldn't really see because no. Jeff obviously you're looking at Jeff Takes, in that situation yeah. but yeah I, I, I do worry about that kind of stuff I think for me the the worst or like the bit which I and I've seen it so I know how it lands but yeah. I still clench up when they go to do it is right towards the tail end where Matt and Bubba go right down the entrance ramp off the ladder and through the tables oh god yeah because there's that moment where you can see both of them have to kick off the ladder a little bit yep. otherwise they'll be sold short yep. and I know it lands I know they, they come out okay it just but every time nervous, I think yeah. this time I watch it they're not going to make it Yeah, like it's going to change the fact but for me that's the moment I always remember yeah. from the TLC match um, other like other stuff I put was for me it was like iconic tag stuff so for me it was seeing uh, Matt and Jeff do okay. Right here we go. This okay. will be the first. Is this a nose description? Yep. Right, brace yourself, everyone. Um, Matt's on all fours. Okay. And Jeff goes to the yeah. turnbuckle, yeah. runs, and uses him as like a jump off to land and then his hits arse it. And, like, yeah. Just I love that. I just yeah. think it's great. Yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah. Do you know what's really annoying now? You've actually picked a move that had you asked me before we started this recording, I'd have named immediately. Oh no, you don't know what because I wanted because I know it's not because it's the will of the wisp is where he jump runs up the turnbuckle himself. Yes. And then flips. And does and, the, yeah, yeah, that's the will. But in my head, mm-hmm. that's now what that's called, and I know it isn't. Oh. So that anyone who is listening, all three of you, if there's that many, <laughs> yeah. will be shouting at me. But I will come back and I will quote what that move actually is. But yeah, I but I agree that that's like classic stuff. Yeah, classic. Yeah. Classic them. Obviously, you've got the the Dudleys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, 3D. 3D. Oh, it's because I, I mouthed it. I gave that one away. Yeah, you but did. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, all of them. Just Edge and Christian, not so much. Well, that like, concerto was, was there, yeah. wasn't it? But 
I just think with those two tag teams as well, it was brilliant. Um, I did get a little annoyed. Right. But why do people just have to get involved? Like, right. it annoyed me then, it annoys me now. Yeah. Always. What, so It just, I don't want to see Spike Dudley. I'm sorry. Oh, I don't, Rhino, Rhino annoyed me the most. Really? A, because of how it ended. Yeah. We know I don't like that. Yeah. But it just gets in the way. Yeah. Lita, fine. I'm here for it. You're here for Lisa. She didn't need to take her top off, though. That was, again, right, that's the thing, like... She looks great, uh, but it, unnecessary. Also, that thong cannot be comfortable. I've never worn a thong, believe it or not. No? Uh, but I okay. can't imagine that at that angle that she had it hoiked up her um, her sides, that that is a particularly pleasant experience for her. Yeah, I mean, speaking as someone who does, I no, That probably, high? Yeah, but they're probably designed, like, you can okay. get them different, like, depths, I suppose, should we say. So glad I'm sitting down. <laughs> Different depths. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. Well, like a high waisted one. So a high waisted one. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, before my thoughts run away with me on that one, I did put. <laughs> uh, this isn't going to make me look good. But no, I'll, I'll start with um, oh, Spike Dudley. Uh, okay. I said he just looks perpetually confused. Like he never yeah. looks like he's entirely sure what's going on. Yep. I mean, he's a former teacher i know that really uh, yeah okay. i can't remember exactly what he taught because um, what was the gimmick was he the, he was the runt a, of the litter yeah he meant to be a brother right yeah the, the, all half brothers basically in the whole oh, dudley okay. clan so just that's to give not real little, no no okay. no D- funny enough bubba and devon are not related <laughs> no. uh, just in case you're wondering <laughs> like <laughs> a spoiler I'm not saying anything. okay fine but no so basically it's it started all the way back in ecw um they started pairing um as dudley boys and then basically the family kept getting larger and okay. larger and is basically supposed to be because uh dada dudley was a hoe and oh, okay all the kids Fair had play. different mums right so that's why you could have someone who was six foot six like uh there was a oh, big dick dudley i think was his name wow. you'll have to google that later but oh, he's God. just an absolute unit of a man okay um uh, probably somehow be on, on your list of people that you like oh, now, said that out great. but uh <laughs> yeah um they Spike Dudley had sign guy Dudley, like just a guy who oh, go around with signs. Okay. So it they kind of took it from there, right? Okay. It into WWF, but they only had, as far as I'm aware, I don't think they had ever had any more than Bubba Ray, Devon, and Spike as the Dudleys in WWF. Right. But that's that's the gist of it. But okay. The following comment I put after Spike Dudley looking perpetually confused, I put Lita running is everything. Oh yeah. That cameraman was. Oh. He was there. He earned, for that. His, he earned his money that day. He earned something. Tell yeah. you that, but yeah, I mean to be fair. Like I said, it was the. I know when she took the shirt off and threw it down. I just remember thinking, "Why?" Yeah, it's not necessary, was it? Well, in, in again, in my younger days, excellent. Oh yeah. But now I'm just like, it meant it wouldn't. It was just to get the guys to go, "Hey!" Yeah. And that was it. For sure. But it's, yeah, okay. Well, it works because that's the reaction. And then, so when Lisa was in the ring, yeah, this is the line that Jr. said, oh, and God, there's no okay. way he didn't say this intentionally. He put Lita jerking edge off, paused, the ladder. He paused, oh, like there was a proper okay. pause in there. And I said, that's not for a few years. Like That's <laughs> that's when she started doing that as a, a profession yeah. or as a hobby. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, and Jay, he knew what he was doing. He was like really? Mystic Meg there, calling out wow. the future. Somewhere Gosh. Matt Hardy's very upset. God. Um, yeah, again, um, a, mo- a moment that I thought was quite nice. It wasn't like a big, big moment, but I think Bubba caught a chair. I think it was one of the Hardys threw it at uh-huh. him. He caught the chair, only to immediately be, have another chair swung at him, which hit the chair into his own face. Okay. It's a little moment, but I quite liked Clever, it. It yeah. looked it looked good. It's not something you see too, too often these days, well, especially with taking a chair shot to the head. Well, yeah, I know. And all the issues that, that that's caused over the years. I liked the, um, I mean, it happens all the time, but obviously haven't heard it in a very long time. Do you want... Get the tables. <laughs> yeah, Loved yeah, it. that was that was early Loved doors, it. and the crowd always get involved in yeah. that as well. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, again, I think my next couple of comments are just like Jeff walking across the ladders would have been great. Yeah, it was a good attempt, but those ladders just weren't playing ball uh, with him. And yeah, the spear from the ladder was iconic. Great assist from Bubba. I thought I'd give him his roses on that one. Um, yeah, I, I pretty much mentioned a lot of stuff. I put the phrase "beautiful carnage" at the end of the match just because built to like a crescendo through the time there was all these little moments mm-hmm. it was fast paced there were very few missteps like a couple of things that they tried yeah. that didn't quite land but and i'm not a fan of interference either i like to see a nice yeah. clean finish but it's wwe I mean, it what, what, yeah, what like... you're gonna do but it didn't annoy me okay i think 
it kind of worked. It didn't overshadow. The only part I would take away if I could was Rhino, as you'll probably say, this uh, Rhino having Christian on his shoulders going up the ladder. Hate that. Yeah. I didn't like it. It's not James Ellsworth. Uh, Honestly, when that happened, I was like, oh, what does this remind me of recently? Yeah. And I thought it was Ellsworth. And then I went, no, it's not. It's Loomis. Oh, yeah. It's Dexter Loomis um, with um, Hardcastle. Not Hardcastle. What's her name? I'm going to leave you to Uh, to land on this one. Indy. Indy Indy Hartwell. Hartwell. And it just, I know, it's hard, something hard, heart. Yeah. yeah. And it. And that annoyed you then as well. Yeah. Didn't it? yeah I, we just, that. I don't like it. I don't yeah. like it because that's not winning to me. Because no. I would be annoyed personally. No. I'd be like, I can do it myself. Again, you know, it's it's predetermined. It's all part yeah, of this story. It just annoys but me. I agree. Like that's why when, as, as you get older, like I said, I, I start to appreciate the athleticism side of it more than the, you still do good storytelling. Yeah. Don't get me yeah. wrong. But that's why I always prefer a company where they treat it more as a sport. So, like, wins and losses matter. How you win and lose matter in terms of your progression. Yeah. I don't want to see someone getting a title opportunity when they've been bounced by five people in the month before. To me, yeah, that yeah, just, I can't even pretend sense, to get invested yeah. in that. So, yeah, I, I agree with you. I, I think wins and losses should matter. Um, oh, and the other, obviously, the one thing I have to talk about is Jeff outside the ring on that massive so on. absolute beast of a ladder yeah onto meant to be on rhino and spike yeah missed rhino completely killed spike absolutely and himself yeah and to be fair it was only when i watched it this time that i realized just how close he was to missing both of them completely mm-hmm. and just absolutely paralyzing himself well i don't know if you've ever seen have you ever seen the 2000 Royal rumble um, if he's in it, more than likely. He was on the show. He was. I don't think he was um, in the Rumble itself, no. but they had a match where he went on to... So it was Madison Square Garden. Yeah. And they had like a taxi car coming through the... I think it was this one. It was a taxi car coming through above the entranceway and he climbed up above it, went Ooh, to do a swan top. Yes. And it's the noise of his back hitting the floor that's sickening. It's, yeah, I just... It's, it's tough. But that, like, in that match was epic and it was great. But my notes say... There's no need for it, apart from to be to be him, because there yeah. was those two people aren't in the match. Yeah. So the only reason to do that was is do that. to be him. I, well, like I said, because you're not getting up after that, which well, he didn't. No, so we don't know, like well, obviously did, the the who the book of was well not the book of the match, but who the road agent was. So mm. when I say road agent, I don't know how Absolutely familiar you are. Not. So it's basically like someone like a Pat Patterson back in the day or a Finley. Who would go and help them? You don't know who Pat Patterson is. That I've I know got, the name, but I've I got don't a know. world to open your eyes to yeah. during this journey. But yeah, so like Finley, you see him talking with the people as they're like in the ring, yeah. basically saying, "Right, so we'll talk about key points that we're going to do going into the match." I don't know with Jeff Hardy stuff how much of that is. Oh, you're like you're Jeff Hardy. You've got you to do, throw. You. Yeah. Or if he's like, "Oh, actually, I want to you know flip and land uh-huh. on my head if that's all right." So because it's that's yeah. I have a feeling that when they found out he could do that kind of stuff early doors, they're like, that's your thing. Yeah. And I don't know if he felt like he had, had to. to. He probably enjoys it. I reckon he probably gets a, a thrill. He look, he's a thrill seeker. Yeah, I mean, and it's good. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I still watch yeah. it and I'm yeah. like, amazing. I'd rather he didn't do any of it now. But I just, I watch it and I'm like, it's brilliant because it's him. Yeah. But a lot of it doesn't land. Mm, yeah. Especially in this match. Like, yeah because there's so much going on you're distracted from it mm. but it does make me nervous that's not so again a little insight into holly there's one particular move that at any time it's done oh, on any show and did, right some not this match it was the other match that we're going to talk yeah. about and it was in there and i shout at the telly every time and i can't watch yeah i just can't watch it so the suicide dive basically uh yeah. they should be they should ban it holly doesn't mind it when they go over the top yep. but when they kind of bullet through the ropes it just puts her at I hate it. unease, yeah. And I get, uh, you're just thinking purely of the Lita incident, though, aren't you? Where she scorpioned herself. Well, be it right, being someone who has a neck that doesn't work properly, right? We'll go into that another <laughs> yeah. date. Um, yeah, it makes me so nervous. And you see so many people, obviously, Lita, yeah, do that. So many people do it, and they catch their feet mm-hmm. on the ropes, or they don't get out well, the ropes enough. Did it not or... too long, awful. relatively, yeah, and that awful. was. I. I feel like only certain people should be doing it. I don't like the fact it's like 
I like Seth Rollins. I know you like Seth Rollins for many Just reasons more than what I like him for. But nah, there, surely not. There's a <laughs> you would. But he does it as a setup where he'll go out, he'll hit them, he'll come back in, he'll go out and hit them again, he'll come yeah, back I, in. I don't like Take it. Take a pause. Yeah. Like make things matter. It's very impressive that you can do this stuff. I'm not taking away from it. You're no. a fantastic athlete. But the reason people are becoming numb to so much of the stuff now is because there's no time to show that it had an impact. Yeah. So we're desensitised to that kind of stuff. We expect it. Yeah. But also, that mat, that mat, that move, what's it doing? Well, what? you're hurtling yourself. I mean, it's not... Yeah, really... but like... Well, you're right, because it never what, quite... Because you, you push them... Oh, sorry. I hit the microphone there. But you kind of push them yeah. away rather than to be fair the only person i've seen do it and it look spot on mm. is someone who's redacted from wwe history chris benoit okay i've seen him do a few of them but, but because he'd take out with it's such like aggression a, it like looked a like a missile spear, like yeah like an absolute in missile. there but yeah i just i see it and i see people do it and all that happens is the other person catches them yeah. to stop them killing themselves yeah and then i look and i go well that did nothing yeah, it's more energy used on the person doing it yeah. than the impact on the other person. I get it. Just let's get rid of it. it, does, let's it make it a banned move. It doesn't. So you'd ban? Oh, yeah, I would ban that. Okay. It just, I, I'm for me personally, brings nothing to the table. Yeah, it puts oh. you at risk of of the person doing it. Yeah, and it's just pointless. So yeah, I don't like it. The, there is a move that I would definitely ban, and it features into the next match. And it's just awful. But okay. I think we've pretty much... The the last line I've got here for, for the notes on the TLC match was... And Heyman says it just as the match finishes. He says, these men have given us a match we'll never forget. And he's not wrong. No. He's not wrong. Like not I said, wrong. you pulled it out as a special match. But I'm sure to many people, especially of the people around our age group, I'd say, it was in our formative yeah. years of watching wrestling, will remember that match to this day. And it, yeah, Paul Heyman was right. It was, it was fantastic. Yeah. I fully enjoyed it. Would um, recommend. I definitely two would. thumbs up. Yeah, if you haven't watched it, give it a watch. Give it a watch, absolutely. I'm sure a lot of you have, but yeah, under Holly's recommendation, give it a watch again properly. Yes. Now that you've had the wonderful insight of to, to what we thought of the match. <laughs> so mine went a little bit more modern than that. So a lot of the stuff I could recall on from being younger uh-huh. is quite dated. So I'm yeah. talking like nineties and, yeah. and stuff like that. And I know you're you can hear the excitement in my voice. Yeah. yeah, you're cautious about when we cover shows from that mm-hmm. era. You're going to make me watch old stuff. Of course I'm going to make you. I'm going to make you Great. watch all the stuff that was better. But oh, I picked something which I think was during uh, the prime Bowen slut oh, years. Oh, God. Um, yeah, but you, I've you, never seen it. You're out of the loop. You hadn't seen never this match. Never seen it. So nope. the match I picked was uh, Cena Punk from Money in the Bank 2011. Um a lot of you obviously will know the importance of this match but the reason why I picked it is because it was the first match in a long time that made me care about the outcome yeah I was convinced I th- knew what the outcome was going to be for that match but I didn't know and I felt like that yeah the fact I didn't know mattered to be someone that had never seen it before yeah obviously when I put the pay-per-view on the intro came on I thought I'll just watch the intro because yeah, I did I the same it and then I skipped some of the matches. However, before I got to that, I will mention it in a minute. I saw some people that I didn't even know existed because oh. this was when I wasn't watching it. Um, but yeah, it got to the match and I didn't know the ending. Mm. And actually, I was like, this is quite nice. And I was like, in my head, it has to finish this way if this is what the rest, like, if this is what it's for. Yeah. It's pointless. Yeah. We all know he's going to, you know, lose. He being punk. Yeah, himself. like, because yeah. uh, that's stupid. And then it got to the end and I was like, Hang on. Yeah. What? Yeah. Because I didn't, I didn't know anything from that era. Yeah. So, I was like uh, boggled. So it was in the the WWE's equivalent of the Summer of Punk, where Punk really came to the forefront. He had the pipe bomb promo that you saw highlights of in that package. Yeah. Where he came out, he's basically told you can say relatively what you like, and at some point you'll be cut off. Yeah. What he said was, I don't know, I don't think he got any of that approved. What he was saying. So it had a realness to it. Yeah. Which, and this is this is something that's missing massively. For, you, don't get me wrong, I'm sure they do it in companies like AEW where they let them go out and do relatively what they yeah. want but just hit key points. And I think to a certain extent, under the Triple H regime at WWE, they have a little bit more leniency on that. But you need people to allow themselves to create characters because if they're all working in the constraints of what a WWE match is, yeah. they're never going to be able to break out of that mould. Yeah. And the whole thing that Vince was saying is just, you know, it's not creating stars. Well, no, you're not allowing them no. to become stars because 
you've seen it time and time again with the likes of Elias. Oh. He was saddled with a gimmick that, on paper, is a joke. Which one, though? Which, well, the one where he was playing not his brother. Like, so the... Oh. Right, we're, we're leaving Ezekiel. That was when they, yeah, they wanted to was, kill him off. Yeah. But the Elias character doesn't work on paper. What, with the With the guitar? guitar. We just, you've seen stuff like... I mean, going back... It could have, it could have worked we so did. well. It did. But that's in spite of yeah. everything else going on. But if we look at characters like that back in the day... Mm -hmm. this is again going before your time but like the only other example I can think of someone who came in doing a music and I'm sure there'll be someone out there who can say that I'm wrong and give me another example Yeah, one that worked was the Honky Tonk Man so you might have heard the name he's actually up the figure up there on the shelf looking like Elvis on the mid one there yeah Yeah, so he was the record setting intercontinental title holder Mm. before Gunter's gone and, and done what he has now currently and his thing was Elvis impersonator effectively but he was a honky tonk man he right. used music and that kind of work people disliked him but all the ones that you've seen since then yeah. haven't worked so I feel like he was set up to fail right because you're giving him a gimmick that already doesn't work exactly Yeah. and yet he made it work in yeah. spite of everything that was put in front of him so Vince I can only assume it's Vince because you know if you're going to be the Billy Big Bollocks making all the decisions <laughs> you're going to get the shots when they're five Yeah. it just went no yeah. Slammed the brakes on it, gave him the shit where he plays every member of his family like it was an Eddie Murphy oh, fucking so film. So weird, so weird. And then they let him go. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's so, so bad. I can't remember why I got into it. Oh, yeah, because they're not creating stars and, like, allowing people oh, to right, do yeah. stuff like this, like they did with CM Punk, mm-hmm. it shows it works. Yeah. It can be done. Like, not everyone's going to make it, but you have to give them the opportunity. Because what do you lose? Yeah. Like, unless it comes out and calls someone a ridiculous name that you can't get on pg-13 or sorry tv yeah for children whatever, pg yeah, yeah sorry that's the phrase i was looking for then i don't see what you have to lose on that then trying no. other than the fact you're making a star and you think oh they're gonna leave and they're gonna be a big star elsewhere and yeah it's just and i don't think that would be the case under triple h but now vince is back mm, i feel like you we're... can see a change like yeah. straight away you know like without even knowing the background you can tell who's in charge and when yeah. because it's just ridiculous which i think with obviously how it, in control Vince was in 2011 obviously he hadn't gone through the bit where he was leaving that was that would happen many years later yeah for him to allow something like this mm-hmm. to come to fruition and play out the way it did yeah was great at the time and it's still in hindsight I still think it's quite a special special match so sorry my mints are that's jangling why around I, sorry I was thinking like I got a blocked up schnoz so yeah I'm and a cough make and it I, sound less bad I've got a tickle in my throat and I'll be honest I'm struggling but I'm going to persevere okay. through this. So I guess, again, we'll, we'll go over my notes, but because yep. like you said, you haven't seen it. I actually made quite a few. You made brilliant. That's more than me. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. On that one. It's good, huh? A lot of it's not relevant, but... Well, that's, that's part of the journey, it's, isn't it? I've made quite a so, lot of notes in this one. Right, so you've kind of given us some of your initial thoughts on it. Mm-hmm. What do you think of the match itself? Like the content? Uh, right. I don't know. I say I don't know. It was good, but had it not been for what it was mm. I think I'd have been a little bit bored really yeah what, what I don't, about it I don't know I just I feel like I did a you yeah. uh, sorry that needs clarification <laughs> she hit the <laughs> microphone, the microphone just to be clear it wasn't playing footsie or something um, I don't know like it was good I did enjoy it but there was no there was no moments when I went oh my god wow okay brilliant like I wasn't I, there were some bits that I thought were really good yeah. But nothing made me go, this is epic. Okay. See, my, my take me. on it, and I think, to be fair, the circumstances of it make it what it is in mm-hmm. terms of all the information going into the, to the match itself. I like the pacing of it because mm. it would it go... It rushed. No, it, it started too off long. slow and it felt it was built like it was a big match. Yeah. So, And you could tell early on... That it was gonna, it wasn't gonna go short. I actually forgot how long this match was. Oh, in I, t- I checked the time when right, I got see, to it. I was like, all right, how long am I, I settling in for? That. I didn't think to do yeah. that because I planned on watching both the matches that we had one okay. after the other. I watched this first and went, nah, yeah, I'm yeah. not going straight into the TLC after that. But a few, a few things that I thought in the match itself, like the first thing is, and credit to him, is that Chicago crowd. My note says they didn't even need to wrestle. Yeah, he could have just stood there. Yeah, for the whole time, and they would have just cheered in the whole time. It was the little decisions though that went. It was so loud as well through the telly. That's what I've got on here. 
um, Punk's entrance to the ring is deafening, even through the telly. Yeah. Never heard, seen a booth so much. Well, they kind of drowned out his... They were so loud, they drowned out his entrance music for, at some points yeah. in our I thought. But it was the little things they did, that it sh- and it showed that it mattered. Like, so, for example, the pause before seeing the music hit. You yeah. let that yeah. bask in that moment. Exactly. Thing, that that was worked. nice. I did appreciate that. I thought that was actually a nice touch. It worked, but it also built the atmosphere. Because you know, as soon as that scene of music mm. hits, that's going to yeah. be met with a wall of booze. Yeah. And it worked. Yeah. I feel like that was a really good little touch. And don't get me wrong, Chicago wrestling and the fans specifically, it's notorious for being loud anyway. Oh, okay. But especially when you've got the hometown boy. Oh, for sure. There. It's it's a different gravy. You see it now. I mean, not only... I mean, Punk transcended a lot of stuff um, in terms of wrestling because obviously after he... Well, when I say wrestling, his impact was long-lasting there. So when he left a couple of years later or three years later, the crowds were still chanting for him. It wasn't just the Chicago crowds. It was the arenas that he went to yeah. every so often like at Raw or Smackdown it was CM Punk just routinely and like I said but Chicago it's a different level in Chicago for a lot of people but especially for him and I think that was it just I, I don't know how far in advance they thought mm. that this was the main event that they were going to do for yeah. this show because I don't think they think as far ahead as what they would like people to think they do right because obviously you, there's so many things you can't factor in, like injuries True. and various Illness, other illnesses. All that sort exactly. of stuff, yeah. Um, but yeah, it just it coalesced perfectly. God, that's a posh word. Coalesce. Well, I, I nearly really said a simulacra earlier, and I just oh Jesus, uh, but no, we'll, no, okay, we'll go. <laughs> but so one of my first notes on this, yep. And this was in stark contrast to how I felt about Paul Heyman on commentary. Is Booker T on commentary is just you, awful. I knew you wouldn't like it. Anyone as like, soon as I heard him, I was like. Oh dear. I, I have all the respect in the world for Booker as a wrestler. I yeah. thought he was great. Always enjoyed watching him back in the day. You don't like listening to him though. I don't like hearing him on commentary. Yeah. For me it doesn't work. And it's not to do with the timbre of his voice or anything yeah. like that. I just don't think the content of what he says is right. good. He feels like he's trying to get overly animated on things that he doesn't need to. Mm. Like fortunately in this one he didn't say shucky ducky quack quack. But every time <laughs> I hear him say something like that I want to rip my ears off. <laughs> Oh, I'm a little sad he didn't, I'll be honest. Because uh, I, I forgot he was on commentary for this yeah. match. Fortunately, for the, a, a lot of it, I was able to tune him out. Because, and to be fair, he didn't get involved as much as uh, Cole and yeah. JR, uh, sorry, not JR, King in that match. But yeah, I just had to put it on the notes that I just he brings nothing for me. He's doing NXT now. Yeah. I wish he wasn't. Uh, okay. Bring, like even Wade Barrett, I'm not a big fan of on commentary. Like him. He's fine. He's, he's leagues above Booker T yeah. for me on commentary. I mean, I miss Nigel McGuinness. Oh, uh, yeah, that's, yeah. The man that nearly broke my hand with a high five. Yeah, I'm, he did. I miss him, but... He's, but yeah, his voice on commentary is lovely. It just works. Yeah. It works. It's a bit velvety. Yeah. Velvet Cockney. It's want to fall going. asleep too. Yeah, well, I'm sure you do other things as well as fall asleep to that. Um, Great. But, so I, and, and this is an interesting touch, and you rarely see Cena do this, but he's done it in a few key matches where he comes out he's not pandering no he knows that it's not the environment for him to do that it's it not works his best. match exactly yeah he did it with rob van damme at ecw one night stand don't know okay. if you've ever seen that nope. show no. that's another one that i'm gonna okay. get to watch he comes out no nonsense yeah. he's not pandering it's not his environment you're right like okay. i said it's not his match he's like the uh nope can't think of the word he'll um no like no it'll come to me let's okay, just move on fine. no but so for me, and Cena gets a lot of crap for his perceived lack of wrestling ability, which to a point I get, yeah. I I don't think it's as bad as people make out to be. I think in hindsight with him not being there as often, you look back at some of this stuff and go, do you know what? Yeah. It wasn't actually that bad. Was he the most athletically gifted other than strength? No. Was he going to hit like a hurricane run as well? <laughs> Funny enough, later on he tries and, and oh my god, that kind of yeah. Stuff. I've got a note yeah. being like, oh, where is it? It literally is like, why is Cena on the ropes? Yeah, why get yeah. down? But like, get down. So his reaction to people going, you can't wrestle, which is a chant that picked up in this match as well, was, well, I'm going to show you that I can try things. Like, so he's that's when he introduced like the guillotine leg drop from the top ten okay. buckles. Um, he would also, I've seen him hit a really shit Hurricane Rana, but he he hit it. I've seen him do the springboard stunner. Oh. Yeah, literally jumping onto the middle rope, coming back, stunner. Yeah. 
and the thing to me is, and like I said, I get all the respect in the world to him, but when you look like an inflated brick, you should not be trying this stuff. No. I appreciate the effort Just of Just call you on trying. your strengths. Like, you are yeah. fucking strong. Yeah. Be strong. Exactly. Which he is. Like. Exactly. Like, it's work with, it's, again, going back to Paul Hamer thing, highlight the strengths, yeah. which is strength you in work, this case. As a person, you work with what you've got, don't you? Exactly. Right. Don't try and do what you don't have, because that's not what people, again, appreciate the effort of you doing it, but yeah. don't. Yeah. Is, is what I'm saying there. Thanks, but no thanks, not yeah. today. Um, and like I said, there's a bit where he goes, and he, I think he hits the guillotine leg drop later in the match, yeah. which is just a flying whoopsie, as yeah. I call it. But the one that he messed, well, he didn't mess up. I think this is as much Punk's fault as it is his, because Punk wasn't ready to kind of make it look like no. he caught him to hit him in that power bomb. Yeah. So John Cena just, like I said, did a flying whoopsie, yeah. landed on his ass, yeah. and Punk. I think on commentary, I think even Booker T actually tried to help cover it up a little bit and yeah. go, oh, I think he tried to do this. Yeah. So there are a few missteps in the match. There is. And I think there was one point where um, Punk goes to hit a crossbody from the top and Cena, I'm pretty sure, is supposed to roll through and pick him up like he's going to yes. throw him up for the attitude adjustment. But he just kind of lands badly on his knee. Uh-huh. And I think that's a genuine... Yeah, I think that has to be a genuine... But... Not injury, but like that it didn't look right no it didn't and the way that cena quickly went to the apron makes me think there, there was an issue there yeah but the only thing that gave me pause to thought and credit pause for thought sorry to give them credit for that was that they then hit the suplex out of the ring yeah but that was only possible i mean they could have set it up differently i guess but that was only possible because cena had rolled yeah to the apron in the first instance i was like you know favoring his knee that was ugly that yeah. suplex to the outside yeah I don't know if I've seen that before. I've seen it before where someone's tried to suplex someone from the ring and they've gone over backwards and then the person suplexing them has flipped out afterwards. Yeah. I don't know if I'd seen that specifically before. Yeah. So, again, they're trying new stuff. It, it was working. But I, I mentioned here that... Um, and, again, when we're covering the announcers, we kind of, well, I touched upon it earlier. Touch is probably not the right word here. But I said, and to give to show how important the match was, because this was, I think, in the early days of Michael Cole and Jerry the King Lawler yeah. having their feud, which turned into an absolute abortion of a match uh, at WrestleMania. Stupid, yeah. I said, King doesn't talk about violating women at all in the match. I said, so that you know it's yeah. an important match. Yeah. I know there were no women there for no. this. Doesn't stop the King. <laughs> when the King's on the prowl, the King, you know, he gets, he gets the comments out. And okay. he didn't do that. But And Michael Cole, who... He's a bit marmite, isn't he? You can, you know, I really pick... like him. Okay, that's yeah. fine. I I have moments where I go, "You're absolutely fine. You, you know, you do your job, you do it well." Mm. When he was trying to be heel, awful, hated mm. it. It was crap. But there was one line in this which he said, which I like, and I'll be honest. I was watching this match, and I had my wife on the sofa next to me. She's not a wrestling fan, and <laughs> after <laughs> it happened, she even commented on it. Oh uh, yeah, I know. Ex- yeah, I've got a note on that. He note. goes, "That was unique." Which basically was Michael Cole's way of saying, "What the fuck was that?" Yeah, it didn't know. Like it just didn't. I think it was yeah. a botch, to be fair. Yeah, but just going that was unique. Just shat a little bit over what was happening there. But like I said, even my missus, who isn't a fan, picked up yeah. that that was an odd thing to say. Right. So, just to take it a little bit away from the wrestling, yes. one of my first comments, All right, um, is why is CM Punk dressed like me when I go to bed when he enters the ring? In a long t-shirt and pants. It looks ridiculous. I don't like pants, men wrestling in pants, as we know, right? No. We know. No one else knows. Yes. I just don't like it. With, with punk, it works. Yeah. But the t-shirt. It's like you're at the beach and you're, yeah. you've are you put a t-shirt on over yeah. your swimming costume. Just come out wearing nothing. Well, like, no, don't do that. Not nothing. But well, yeah. I, I just... But to me... It's so silly. I found... So when he went to AEW, started wearing trousers mm. and to me i say trousers the light yeah, yeah, yeah. It, that didn't look right okay back in the day before he came to wwe his thing was doing it in these like long shorts effectively if you ever look up a like picture the jujitsu Pun- shorts or no so no. like it's just i don't know have you said like thai kickboxing they're just very yeah. long shorts yeah. that kind of flow out to me, that's the look that worked for him the best. Okay. Because it's a little bit grunge, it's a little bit... And that's his style as well, his style of... Exactly. With the kicks and all of that stuff yeah. is very much so But I, 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 I get what you mean. And for me, the thing that threw me off was his hair. Okay. Like So um, we got a, a mutual friend, and all I was thinking of was him when I saw it. I thought his hair looked like Wayne. 
And that's oh, not an insult. Oh, okay. But yeah, it does. It, but for but punk, I, I don't think it. it works. Oh, I don't mind it, but okay. Only because later on when it starts to come out in Sprouts and stuff where you yeah. look like a snork. Uh, part part way through it. That's a very UK based <laughs> reference there. I don't think the well, it's, it's a great show when you're a kid, but I don't think I don't know if that was over I'll in the states or any Google. other countries yeah. that might be listening to this at a later date. But um, yeah, give the snorks a Google. If there's anything you got to take away from this show, it's give the snorks a Google. But for me, Punk's hair needs to be very short, right? Like shaved, nearly. Yeah. Okay. But then now his ears stick. Anyway, like. I'm not going to go oh, into that kind of stuff. Don't pick on people with big ears. There's well, nothing to stick out. big ears. Anyway, we well, digress. Ears are fine. Her neck is fucked, though. I'll give her that. <laughs> um, but, yeah, or he has to have the long, greasy hair. Okay. Because it just doesn't look right. And he's got the lips of a snake. I don't know if you mm. saw that in the... Well, you probably saw it, but you didn't oh, think about it. Well, as... one of my notes just says, why is he wrestling with a lip ring? Because Fair. that's very dangerous to me. Well, then again, why does then Jeff Hardy, Hardy wrestle with, holes with a in his ears, vagina so... on his ear? Right. Like it's... It's, a fair, it's just, I didn't notice but, it before. And then I was like, oh, and he constantly plays with it while he's But didn't Orton wrestling. use that in the match against Hardy? Yes, he did. He put really? his finger in it. Yeah, that's good. Gross. You should. But like, if you, like that's a level of realism. Like, if I was having yeah, a fight true. with someone, I could yeah. put my finger in there and rip. That's probably yeah. what I'm going to do. Yeah. So that works. Um, that's gross. But yeah, so, oh, sorry, I've kind of taken no, no, it's it over okay. again. So what have you got in the notes? Seen as standard jean shorts. Jorts. Oh, awful. awful. Yeah. I hate them. My but mate Steve him. has a lovely pair of them as well, but he doesn't try and wrestle in those. No. No. Um, and the whole match, I was waiting for Cena to pump up his trainers. No. And he didn't. No. So, but that actually leads on to a good point. So the <laughs> bit he used to do that for yeah. was just for the five knuckle shuffle, wasn't mm-hmm. it? And again, it may well have been counted like this before. But him, as soon as he leant over, and then Punk kicks him in the top of the head. It's a brilliant counter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Who's not doing that? Exactly. I don't think I'd seen that before. Yeah. But it works. Yeah, yeah, of course you would. Um, What else have we got here on my... Yeah, so I put here the the kick to the face to count the five knuckle shuffle was great. Uh, Plunk. uh, Plunk. Well, funny enough, that'll actually work quite well based on what I'm about to say. So, Punk flipping out of the... I put FU here because I keep forgetting it's called the Attitude Adjustment. Oh, I actually wrote Attitude Adjustment. Oh, nice. Pat on the back for me. Well done. Brownie point, Polly. Thank you. Um, Where he ended up landing in a whoopsie. So, where (laughs) Punk, again... Is that when they tried to do the Attitude Adjustment into the go to sleep and it just all went to... Yeah, so he like fl- flips mess. out. You can see Punk try to forcibly yeah. flip his body over. Yeah. And it was just an elaborate Wee! splat. Yeah, it just didn't really work. And I chuckled, I'll be honest. Yeah. But yeah, so Plunk kind of works there. It was very Good much point. a Kaplunk moment. Um, and the knee to the face. Oh, Got to talk about that my knee to the face. God, that was brutal. Again, like I said in the last one, we know stuff's predetermined and stuff, but you're looking at that. Like, a normal person yeah. would be out cold... For a long period of time. I I don't know how there was no blood there. Either yeah. the camera angle was so spot on yeah. that it hid the fact that it didn't connect, but it looked... It looked brilliant. Like, do you remember the one where Rollins hit Cena and redecorated his oh, face with his nose? His nose, yeah. I it was expecting yeah. that to come out of this because that's how hard that looked it, like it landed. Yeah. I'll put it was spicy. And they had to shove it like four times. I was like, once was enough. I think Thank you. Though the only reason they did that was because there was no blood. Right. It didn't lead to anything. So I can't quite remember what happened when Rollins did that to Cena. I, I know, obviously, the after effect, but I don't remember how many replays. I think we saw it once. once I think. And they were going, oh, then that's carried... enough. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But, um, yeah, no, that was that was absolutely brutal. Yeah. Right, so you wanted to ban the suicide dive. Yes. This is the move I want to ban. Specifically, this person from doing it. Because it is shit. The John Cena STFU. Oh, my God. I've got that written down. It oh, is brilliant. horse shit. I said, what does it do? Exactly, because the whole point of that is I you're supposed to do... someone could put me in that and I'd be like, this is a nice stretch. Well, I'll do it after the... <laughs> thing. I'll give you a nice stretch with that move after. But it's like the meat hook grip yep. you're supposed to put in front of the face yep. and the idea is that you're leaning back a bit like, like a the cross the... face. Yeah. Pulling back the neck, the head, all yep. that kind of stuff. He just puts his arms, crosses them yep. and like gives you a chin rest. Yeah. Whilst he it, does the it lazy, does, it does it's, it's the laziness of the move I don't like rather than him doing it. And there's certain other people that do moves that bug me no end. For example, I love The Rock. Right. Like, that's not a secret. What the you, Scorpion gonna... Deathlock, oh, okay. he does, is a pile of... It's awful. Like, for as good as Bret Hart's 
sharpshooter was uh-huh. is as bad as the rocks is because he just goes I'm just going to cross your ankles a little bit and go ah right doesn't work no. doesn't look good it needs to look believable yeah and I, it just completely takes me out of the moment so for as good as I thought this match was not only with the build but like the, the content of the match itself that took me out of the moment and that's a okay. shame that's a real shame yeah but yeah I mean another moment that I thought was quite nice they, they did do a counter sequence of attempted finishers yeah uh, to the second STF which that worked that landed a little bit better yeah. than the first attempt that they did um, and I thought again uh, the, uh, highlighting how the little moments matter is when after Punk got hit with a the FU, oh, sorry, I got oh, no, yeah. the attitude adjustment is when Cena challenged the ref, and he was like, "I don't know if this even landed with you when you did." But he yeah. kind of got up and went to the ref like, "No, that was a come on, this is a three rather than a just where they wide eyed, open mouth, yeah, everyone kicking out of everyone's finisher fourteen yeah. times at Mania. It was like it again. It felt real, like he was genuinely put out yeah. that that wasn't a three. And the only other note I've got from this at the tail end of the match, um, well. I'll add a comment that my, my wife said again. This was the match that she was watching. Oh, is this when Vince comes Vince out? Vince McMahon comes out. And Laurenitis? Lauren yeah, John Laurenitis, yeah. I um, only know him because he's married to he's Mickey the, and the Bella's daddy. Bruce, yeah, his yep. stepdad, yeah. Basically, well, yeah, I bet he wishes that they called him daddy. Oh, um, but, but when Laurenitis came out, anyone that punches Laurenitis, it's good food for the soul. I actually thought that was really good because he came. they came out and I obviously didn't know how this finished. And I was like oh here we go great he's going to be screwed out of this because of this and then I liked the fact that obviously I know it's not real I'll just say this Cena did what he did yeah. because I was like oh good no okay that's yeah I like that I would prefer like don't interfere let me win this match yeah well that's his whole yeah. thing isn't it that's his whole shtick yeah I like it we know I, I don't like interference so. I was going to say we both picked a match which had a level of interference or attempted yeah. interference in that's, yeah. that's interesting I'm using that term loosely but it's, it's i'm surprised by that <laughs> but yeah and obviously with it ending i was shocked i remember at the time i saw it i was shocked that that's how they let that finish yeah i mean from what i understand in terms of the behind the scenes stuff so going into that day that was genuine that was punk's last day under right. contract with the company and i think it was about two hours or so before the show he actually signed the extension. So it was only at that point oh, okay. that he'd signed to agree to stay on. Right. So, so I no don't one know, knew, really. So I don't know if that would have changed the outcome of the match. Okay. I don't know. It would have been such a different story if he was actually leaving. And then yeah. you could still could have had him, you know, leave. And then because we'll for me, they go, oh, we can't have him walking out with a title. You, you can buy one. Well, yeah. True. You don't need the actual one. And then yeah. just do a tournament the next day. No, that's the importance they put on that just seems wrong to me yeah. it does, doesn't seem right but yeah so punk signed his extension mm-hmm. and then what happened happened he leaves through the crowd which is a great touch that was brilliant actually, yeah, blowing I, actually a kiss. I actually really enjoyed that ending i thought it was very clever I, vince just irritates me yeah but i did think it was very clever being like right get del rio out to cash in i thought that was very clever Yes, although he took a sweet time. Oh, honestly, he clearly wasn't ready. Well, I guess it was as much as they had to pretend like it wasn't planned. Yeah. Like, oh, so because he would have been there the whole time. Oh, standing in the exactly in the gorilla position. That's it. I can again. This is like another term that I can go into detail of why it's called that and stuff Mm. for you. Like, there's so much to learn. Exciting times, but yeah, and him going through the crowd. I don't know if you saw any of the the aftermath of, of what happened with that. But because um, I think he left the arena in that gear, oh, I he see. got in a car, went home, left, yeah. yeah, and then he put the belt in the fridge. So there's a picture of him oh. opening his fridge door. I think with Pepsi cans and oh, all that other stuff around course. with the WWE title belt oh. in the fridge, and that was on all Random. the Instagram and stuff like that. Oh, um, which is something I'm learning about, um, which we'll come on to in a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, overall, like I said, it was a match that was it the best match of all time. Though? No, atmosphere fantastic. Brilliant. They told a good story. And it made me care more than a lot of other matches have. What did happen to Cena after this? So Because he was meant to lose his job, wasn't he? Yes. Like, oh, so if, you, if you lose... I don't remember all the details. You're fired. So, but what happened in terms of what they did with the title, mm. I'm pretty sure it was the next night on Raw, and they should have dragged this out. They didn't play this part well. The next night on Raw, they had, a, I think it was a four-man little tournament oh, right, yeah. to crown a new WWE champion, which, if I recall correctly, Rey Mysterio won. Oh. But... John Cena came out that night, challenged him there and then, got 
booed because it's a dick move. If you're supposed to be a good guy and yeah, Ray's just move, had two yeah. matches or if he won a match straight up, I can't remember, I think it was a four man tourney. Challenging guy who's four foot nothing. Yeah. You can put him in your pocket. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. He beat him and was the champion, celebrating, and then some music hit, which everyone was like, well, I mean, people in the know knew what was going on right. because of the music of choice. That's when Punk came out to cult of personality for the first time. So a day Felicia, later? I'm pretty sure oh. it was the following night. We might have Raw. to YouTube that later we will. just we so can, I can be nosy. And yeah, look, but and we can like, A day later? It. Yeah, they definitely should have strung that out for longer. Yeah, they, they could have had it like where Punk was appearing at different shows like not officially but just like in the vicinity just yeah. teasing like he was going to do in something the crowd or then have watching. him come back later exactly they played that so badly they rushed it yeah. and it didn't land well but everything up to that moment i thought was really good so that was the aftermath of that yeah okay again if i got some of the facts wrong there please do let me know um so speaking of which so that's kind of brings us to the end of the two matches that, that we wanted to cover seems to have gone a good length which is pleasing because we're never yeah. too sure how long these things are going to go but as I said, we don't have like a set time in mind. We're just going to make sure that we cover everything we want to and because of the segues and divergences that we have in conversation, there will be some shows that are going to be very long. So bear with us for that kind of stuff. Um, but I think in terms of, you know, what we need to cover is, I guess, mention the socials. The hashtag yeah. socials. I hate myself saying that. <laughs> it sounds so old. So I am old. I am old. I mean, I barely use Facebook. That's about the only one I have. I don't use Facebook. No, well, that's true. Absolutely not. That's not true, because when you came back to work, that was the place I messaged you. Oh, yeah, I just don't, like, post anything on the... No, you don't Don't look at all the messages that come through on Facebook, do you? Absolutely not. No. no. Um, Thank you. But, yeah, so I guess I'll let... Holly, this is more your domain than mine, but we have set up a email account, because what we're thinking is, like I said, for future shows, um, or future episodes of the podcast, I should say, we're going to cover a show in its entirety, for the short term, we'll take it in turns to pick a show. Yep. I think that's fair. Yeah. Ladies first, so you can pick the, the well, one for... Well, how about today, we're going to watch Fast Lane. So do that for and the... we play our So we play a game when we when we watch wrestling, okay. is that we do predictions of who's going to win, how they're going to win, and what else we're going to see. Mm-hmm. I am awful at this game. Not true. Well, I'm... Not true. You've, you've I, was, me a I was better in, in live person. When we've seen... The shows we've seen live, I was better at. Yes, this is true. Um... So why don't we have the winner of tonight of today can okay. pick the first show that we want. Okay, fine. So Just don't yeah. make it a really old one when you win. Not the first one. No, not early doors. I'll no. do ones that are in your wheelhouse so you okay. get in a comfort zone. Then I'll take okay. you very deep out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it doesn't just have to be like WWE. It doesn't just have to be on the network. Like I said, I've got subscriptions oh, yeah, yeah. to other things that we can watch. So yeah. that's what we're going to do in the short term. Like I said, we're mainly doing it because yeah, we enjoy we this enjoy kind of it. stuff. It's for yeah. Us, yeah. yeah, it's for us. If other people get on board, that's great. Um, but yeah, maybe down the line, like if we get some feedback from people and people can suggest shows, depending on what the demand is for that down the line, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll visit it at that point in time. But there are ways that you can contact us, um, which I guess we can cover depending on the content of it. Obviously, you have to be you have to be nice because we're very, very scared of, of all you people out there because you're wrestling fans and we know what you're like. Um, there's because we, we are those people. We are those people. But when there's they we're get only far t- too invested. We're only two of those people. Yeah, like true. there's there's a, a sea of people out there, potential yeah. listeners. Yeah. But we created a email um, for you guys to contact us on, which Holly's got the details for there. Uh, yes, I do somewhere. Uh, let me just make sure I get it right because that would be embarrassing. So yeah, the email address is all one word: windtwicepod at gmail dot com. Um, one of us will be managing said email account. She said whilst looking at me and not blinking. Probably not me. <laughs> and then we have an Instagram page, which at the minute looks a little bit sad, but there'll be some posts on it too. Again, win twice pod is how you find us. Yeah, so hopefully you guys have uh, managed to stick with us for this over well, an hour and ten minutes. I know. So that's pretty good. I'm amazed we've talked for this long without saying anything too highly offensive, I'll be honest. Well, that's, yeah, no, that's good. And to be fair, like I said, anything that we say is meant... It's all in jest. It's all in jest. We're having a good time. We're not meaning to offend anyone. But, but if Baron Corbin comes for you for calling him a sperm, he does look like send a massive him my way. He could definitely <laughs> kick my ass. I'm not saying he couldn't, but the man looks like a massive jizz. Right, um, so I think that's a good point to end this off on on that word. Uh, Thank you all for listening. Hopefully you'll stay in tune for the next one and we'll probably put a a sneak preview of what the show will be before it's actually released on the social. Yeah, sounds good. Cheers, everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye.